Hey everybody, it's Jeannie. It's Wednesday. It's hump day. Uh, and you know what that means. Ain is here today. Ain so, Ain is going to help me with the, holding the phone in just a few minutes as I show you some things. Um, I did want to remind you that 30% off one machine accessory is good till Christmas. Our uh, special cuts are on sale, 25% off. And that's the um, layer cakes, the charm packs, the jelly rolls, the honey buns, those things. So, And we have a great selection of those. So make sure you come take a look. We've gotten some awesome new fabrics in. We got wine and we got more chickens. Um, but I'll probably show you that tomorrow when Jane is here so she can pull those fabrics out. Um, I want to um, just remind you to keep us posted on what you would like to do. We're starting to think about what classes to put on the schedule. Um, because everything's kind of up in the air, as you know. So um, I want to thank you for your prayers about Doug. He is feeling really good today. He came in a little while ago. He said, you know, I thought the dash lights were out on my truck, and they actually are there. So all of a sudden, he's seeing colors and things, and um, his eyes are adjusting a little bit more each day. So he's come through it, so he's going to do the next one next Monday. And then I'll do mine in January is the plan. Big thing today, I hope you saw my post. And that is, I'm going to turn this around. This whole table is stockings. I am just, I mean, I was almost in tears. It was just amazing. 748 stockings for Meals on Wheels. Look at this. They are just everywhere. I, and I just think it's absolutely amazing. You all are wonderful, wonderful people. So everybody that shared, <clears throat> that made some stockings, um, it's just amazing. Uh, also, I have a pile over on the back table of the mug rugs. We have round mug rugs, square mug rugs, rectangular mug rugs. So we have a pile of those that we will also take down. I'm just, I, I just, I'm overwhelmed. I'm overwhelmed. And I think they will be overwhelmed also. Isn't this neat? And then um, some of you missed the toy drive for Grace. We will have that again for Quilt Club next week. But people are bringing them in that were not here. So if you have toys that you want to donate that are going to go to Grace, just drop those off to me and we will get them here. Okay. Okay. Ain, are you good? I'm going to come <laughs> Every time she says she's going to be right there and ready for me, she's not there. A couple things today. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna let you hold that. Don't touch that button down there. Oh, okay. Okay. Why is it my um, We talked yesterday about the things to do on towel bottoms, and I can't do everything because I can't bring a serger in here because I don't have a table. <laughs> I know that sounds really silly. I've got things piled over on the ironing table today because the table's full of stockings, which I am not complaining. Um, so um, I did want to show you a little bit on the ruffler because we talked about that. The ruffler attachment, um, it's not a gathering foot. It is a ruffler attachment. And there is a brand for each machine. If you have a brother machine, you want to get the brother ruffler. If you have a Viking machine, get the Viking ruffler. If you have a Janome, we have a generic ruffler or a Janome ruffler. Some of them can go back and forth from brand to brand, but make sure you get one that will fit on your machine. This happens to be on the Viking. It is a screw-on foot. Some of them are snap-on. This particular one is a screw-on. There are several adjustments on a ruffler right here. I don't know if you can see these old numbers. It says 1, 6, 12, and 0 zero. It, these actually, when you say it's a gathering foot or a ruffler, it's actually making little pleats. And this is how many stitches are between each little pleat. And then there's another screw down here on all the rufflers that's a fullness screw. So the tighter or looser you make that, that's how deep it makes the little pleat. The other thing that is an adjustment is the stitch length on your machine makes it different. So I have some samples here to show you. So this is on number one, and that looks more like a gather. So see how those little tiny pleats are in there, and it's kind of like a gather. I put a little sign on there so maybe you could see it. And then this is when it's on six, and see it's a small pleat. Can you see it? And then this is when it's on 12. And so there, there's 12 stitches between each little pleat. So I wanted to show you the difference. These are the ones I generally use six. Sometimes I use one. These three are all done on six. And these are ones I would use when I'm putting something on a towel. But if you want a real full ruffle to make on a little girl's tutu or anything like that, then you could certainly use number one. So I'm going to slide these off the back. 
what I've done here is I've taken a piece of fabric and folded it in half, so it's double. Now, if I wanted to gather a single piece of fabric, which I showed you yesterday, I would just whip it through the serger. Uh, and then because the serger ruffles are adjustable because you can pull on that needle thread and I will show you that a different time I just didn't have room to put them all in here at the same time Notice I have a serger stitch holding those two layers together and that's wonderful If you don't have a serger you could do a zigzag stitch or even a straight stitch The reason we do that is if it goes through the ruffler it might kind of start skewing the fabric and not keeping it evenly folded in half. So that's why I like to run it through the serger first. And then when I'm going to make a ruffle, I'm going to slide this in here. And one thing you want to do before you start using a ruffler attachment, make sure you have a good bobbin and that your machine is threaded. Because once you put this on, it's a little difficult sometimes to get to the needle threader or to change the bobbin. You might have to take the foot all the way off. So I'm going to put the presser foot down. And there's teeth in here. There's little teeth that are going to kick those little pleats I was talking about. Before I start anything on the ruffler, there's another screw back here at the back that you can kind of adjust side to side because you want to make sure your needle's right in the middle. Now, I'm going to come over here, Ain, to my hand wheel and turn it down just to make absolutely certain my needle is not hitting anything that it shouldn't be hitting. And when you do this, you don't want to speed. So I'm going to start here. <laughs> Wait a sec. I can't reach my foot control. There we go. Okay, whoa. And I just said don't speed. So there's a kick. Six stitches, kick. Six stitches, kick. Now notice I can't go down the middle of a piece of fabric because it's closed in over here. But do you see what it's doing? And I could make it more full to go through there. Okay, I'm gonna raise this and pull this back. So see there, it has done a little pleat every six stitches and I went incredibly crooked, um, but that's okay. But it does a great job. So if you're going around a pillow, going across that towel or anything, it's just super. You don't wanna speed because it is moving a lot. You wanna check that screw that's holding it on and make sure that's staying tight. It's kind of like the walking foot because this little arm is on the screw that holds the needle. And when it goes up and down all the time, you wanna make sure that screw doesn't loosen and also that the screw that holds it onto the, the bar, ankle bar is not loosening. Because if it does get loose, then the needle's gonna hit the foot, then you're gonna break the needle, right? You're gonna make a mess. What a mess. And you just do it with a straight stitch, okay? So this is the ruffler attachment. There's also a gathering foot that does one layer of fabric. Um, it's done with Batisse, Organza, things like that. And then we have the serger, and I'll show you the serger technique a little bit later, okay? So now we're gonna go over here. So follow me over here. <laughs> And this is the ruffle that we had on one of the towels yesterday um, to put on there. We had a couple different samples. And then I had the prairie points on here. So some people asked me to show the prairie points. I'm over here at the ironing board, not necessarily because I need the iron, but because there's no room in this room <laughs> for this. So prairie points start out as a square. So I'm going to unfold. I've got the two different types of prairie point folds kind of pressed for you. So you can cut squares of fabric, individual squares, and the two ways to do it, you would fold it in half on the diagonal and then fold it in half like that. And there's a prairie point. And then when you have another prairie point that you're gonna put next to it, you can actually stick them inside and make your layers however you want to. Now this is if you were gonna put them on one at a time. The other way to fold the prairie point is you again, start with a square, only this time you fold it in half and then fold it like that, okay? And then some people want this side to show and some people would rather have the plain side to show that does not have the little opening in it. But again, you can layer these, you could lay them on top of each other, you could overlap them, you can put them inside, you could do whatever you wanted. It would take you a while to make a real good arrangement of having them one at a time, but there's nothing wrong with doing that. That's the basic prairie point. Then there has, we have the method called continuous prairie points, and that's what I mentioned yesterday. So what I've done here, this is a six inch wide piece of fabric, and it makes a prairie point this size. Now, if you want to do them without any kind of help, and see, and here's both sides of that, you can take the six inches, you're going to fold it in half and crease it. Then you're going to measure over here three inches. So you would take your ruler 
and this happens to be three and a half inches, but you would measure down three inches. I gotta find the right end. There we go. Three inches and cut right here. Okay, you would slice over to there, and I'm gonna show you this in just a second. Over on this side, you would measure an inch and a half and cut. Then from that cut, I would come down here three inches, cut, three inches, cut, and I would continue to do that as well as on this side. And if you paid attention, the cuts on one side are halfway the distance of the cuts on the other side. Does that make sense? <laughs> no, it doesn't make sense. Well, we have this tool, and some of you may be familiar with these. These are called the quick point rulers. These are specifically for making continuous prairie points. And all it is, as I lay the ruler on here like that, I take my rotary cutter, and you see how that has that little ovally opening there? Now, this is still wrapped up in cellophane, so I'm not going to actually cut it. But I would cut like that, then cut like this, cut like this, which is just the same thing I just told you, only this you have a plastic ruler to do it with. Now, I have another one ready to go to kind of show you, so bear with me. This one is the very same thing. This one is a wider piece of fabric. And I kind of like to do this because I sewed two different pieces of fabric together because then your prairie points are two colored. And I think that's what's fun. That's what's on that Halloween towel. Isn't that fun? So I sewed the two pieces together. And on this one, I, this is eight inches wide. So this is another ruler. It's the same thing, only this one's bigger. So see, I lay this on here, and again, cut, cut, cut all the way down, however far you want it. And then after you do it, I've got this one cut, and it doesn't matter if you're cutting it with the ruler or if you just do it yourself with um, a marker or whatever. So once I get these cuts in here, I'm gonna fold this over and crease it. So I am gonna use my iron, and I'm probably not gonna do a great job because I got too much stuff on the table. I'm gonna fold that over and crease it. I'm gonna come on the other side and fold that one over and crease it. And I would take my time and really do a nice job. The reason I'm doing one side at a time is you wanna make sure they're all going the same direction. In other words, I don't wanna turn around and have this one going that way. Oh, Ains, Ains ringing. Hang on, hang on. Okay. <laughs> okay. Then you would come back and fold it the other way. Can you see it past the iron? Is that showing? Yeah. I would fold that that way. I would fold this one back this way, crease it. Fold this one back this way, crease it. I think you can kind of see what I'm doing. And then the fun thing is when you want to arrange these, you're going to fold this in half. See, I have these already folded. And you can do it like this so that they kind of look like they're tucked into each other. Or you can do it like this, and there's, there's a way, if you hold your mouth right, you can do it so it looks like there's one kind of peeking up in between two of another. Isn't that neat? You can just play with this and make it look however you want. Now, if you fold it correctly, if you do it this way and have those seams on the inside, I have no raw edge right there. And if you look on this one, on the towel, there's no raw edge because that was the fold. If you do have a raw edge, if you do it this way and you end up with a raw edge, then you would, when you put it on your towel or whatever, you'd have to have a way to cover that edge. You could zigzag it or whatever you wanted. But notice there's a row of stitching right along there holding those together. Can you kind of see it? And see this one, I've got it folded so they look like the one is peeking up, but this is all the same color. This one was kind of fun. This happened to be a piece of fabric that had, it looks like jelly rolls, only they were printed on the fabric, but it would be like sewing two jelly roll strips together. And then when you do it, see how you get the two colors? Isn't that fun? And see these, I have one peeking. I kind of like that peeking up, but I also like to see on this side, it looks the other way. But there's a row of stitching along there. And then when you sew them onto your towel or your quilt or whatever you want to put them on, that's all you do. So there's some samples of that. This is just a difference in size. That's all it is. These are the rulers. The only thing bad about these rulers is they're big. So you have to have a place to hang them up. And if you have a place to hang them up, they're great. Um, I have the two sizes. This is the bigger one. And then this makes that smaller size. There's also one that's even smaller than this. And they're called quick points rulers. So if any of you have a question about those, 
let me know. I, I love prairie points. I do a whole class on prairie points because there's a lot of different ways that you can um, embellish fabric and use striped fabric and use decorative stitches, but I'm not going to show you those today because they're really fun. Um, but I will show them another time. And then one other ruler that's by the same company as the quick point, the, the um, prairie point ruler is this one. And this is the one that makes scallops. So I wanted to show you that. See the towel? This has the scallops on the bottom. And it's done kind of the same way. This is a lot more work. This is two rows of scallops sewn onto this terry cloth towel. Can you see them, Aim? See, there's two different rows. And the scallops have one peeking out from another. And this ruler, this is a lot more work to do it, but I wanted to just give you a quick rundown. You would put two pieces of fabric right sides together and you trace this all around. And then you sew it around and there's a little hole. See that little hole right there? That's right where you turn when you're sewing it. So you're sewing those two strips of fabric together following the line that you drew and then you cut it obviously don't cut your stitches but you cut outside your stitches all the way around however long you were going to make this you would just continue to make this as long as you wanted and then you make a slit right down the middle I don't know if you can see that little hole right there mm -hmm. you don't cut through both pieces of fabric you only cut through one and then you turn the scallops right side out so you it's kind of hard to do this without it made you turn it right side out and this is called a pusher I think pusher is kind of a scary word. <laughs> this is called a pusher, and you push this up inside that scallop, and then it will, um, you can iron on this, and you get a really nice, smooth edge. I'm going to do something gross. How many do you do this? I lick my fingers, and I go like this when I have a curve, and I want to bring that seam right to the outside edge. That's, That's gross. That's what the pusher <laughs> is gross, but it's, it works. Um, but this is a, a rounded edge, and it just fits right up inside there. So you can see the scallops. Oops, I'm going to, the seam, there's the seam. So there's uh, two pieces oh, there of fabric, okay? okay. And mm -hmm. that seam is right at the edge, but the seams are really nice and smooth because you use that pusher. Um, and then there is kind of a seam underneath there. That's why there's a band on top of here. This one, I've put um, that giant rickrack on top. And this is two layers. That's kind of a lot on the towel, but I think it's kind of cute. Um, so the fabrics you would pick, and those are available in a couple different sizes also. The ones we have here are the size... That I'm showing right here. So if you have a question about the prairie points, I had some comments yesterday um, that you wanted to see the prairie points, the continuous prairie points. And also, if you go on, I'm gonna take it now. I'm gonna, okay. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Hopefully this made a little bit of sense. If you go on um Yahoo or where Google, wherever you go, um, and enter continuous prairie points. There's a lot of handouts or little video tutorials about how to do what I was just doing. It's really easy and it's kind of addictive. I really like to do the ones that end up with two fabrics. So if you sew two fabrics together and then you make those slits and fold, it's fun, it's easy, and it looks like a million bucks. And people think, how did you do that? Because it really is a really neat technique. So I hope that helped a little bit to understand a little bit how to do that. I apologize for my ironing table being so crowded, but I lost all my table space over here. So that's okay. I'm trying to get a serger in here to do some work and I literally have no place to put it. And we have some people over in the other room today. So hi ladies over in the other room. Um, and I didn't want to bother those. We are getting ready to do some of those um, clothesline coasters and the clothesline bowls. We've been playing with that and it's really fun. That's kind of addictive too. I'm putting the binding on my tree quilt. I have it all ready to put the binding on. So so I've got this all ready to go. Some of you saw that. So maybe tomorrow I'll have that done. Um, I've got so many projects in the works. There's so many things I want to do. And I'm hoping to do some embroidery or applique on some towels really soon, too, because I need some hostess gifts to do. So thanks for watching, y'all. I love the comments, um, as long as they're nice. <laughs> um, I really do appreciate the comments, the, the, the hearts, the hands up, whatever you want to do. So keep in touch. And we, Jane and I will be here tomorrow. We'll see you then. Okay, thanks for watching, y'all. Have a blessed day.